My favorite sauerkraut is ginger arame. I used to pick it up at Whole Foods or Natural Grocers in a little container. I think it was about 16 ounces for, I don't know, $7. And I really, really like it, but I just think that's too much to pay for something that I can make myself. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make homemade sauerkraut. wakame instead of arame it's just easier for me to find and I have this on hand usually for other salads and stuff that I make but we're also gonna need a good quality salt and cabbage organic is good if you want to spend that money and ginger again organic is good the first thing we're gonna start off doing is getting our jar clean I'm just heat it with hot water and sometimes I'll spray it out with vinegar but that's all you need to do you don't really want to use a soap and First thing, we're gonna take this dried wakame and pour in about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of the dried wakame and just put it into our jar and you're gonna start seeing it bloom or just rehydrate. And as far as measurements go, for one quart size jar, you just need about one good size head of cabbage, not too large. This um, size of cabbage usually fills up the quart size jar and I have a little bit extra, almost like maybe like a half a pint extra and I'll just eat salted cabbage as a side for whatever we're eating that night. And you can see in there that the uh, wakame is already starting to rehydrate, so it'll go fast by the time we're done cutting up this cabbage. So like I said, we're gonna need a good salt, we're gonna need our head of cabbage, and some ginger. So next, let's start peeling up the ginger. And I take the skin off because I didn't buy organic, but if you buy organic and just wash it really good, that that's good because you'll have that extra, um, that extra bacteria from the air and uh, it'll collect on there so that's a good thing and then be sure to take off any brown spots for ferments you really want to make sure to get bruises and damaged pieces out because it you know it might put mold and things like that into your ferment so just be be mindful about that and i'm just peeling this off for one head of cabbage i like to use about two inches like this this size right here is a pretty good size Ginger can get pretty spicy, so it's up to you if you want to amp it up and add more. Um, I like it uh, um, spicy, so that's why I put. I tend to put a little bit more. So we're just going to chop it up, add it to our bowl, and we're going to start working on the cabbage. For the cabbage, we're going to be starting out by washing it really well and also removing the larger leaves and setting those aside. We're going to use those later, so don't toss them out. I just want to show you real quick. This is what the um, seaweed looks like right now and we've only just rinsed off the cabbage so far so you can see how fast that it it rehydrates it doesn't take any time at all all right so let's get this cabbage chopped up it's pretty basic uh cut it in half remove the core and chop it up into little fine strips or however you like to cut your cabbage i find for me that cutting it into quarters works and then just slicing it up from there however you want to do it just get it done So as I'm cutting and adding the cabbage to the bowl, I like to salt it in layers and that just makes it go faster. You'll notice that as you work, the cabbage will actually start to wilt down and release the juices because of the salt. And it makes, you, it makes the salt easier to distribute as you're working. So that's a good tip to keep in mind to salt as you go. Alright, so once that's all cut up, we could put it into a bowl. I transferred to a bigger bowl. And what you're going to start doing is you're going to start um, massaging the salt into it, just kind of squeezing and kind of like you're kneading a dough. And after about five minutes, you'll notice that uh, there's creating a lot of juice. And that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. By the way, I did put the cabbage right into the same bowl that I put the um, ginger into. So what I'm doing next is I am just rinsing, not rinsing, I am straining off the seaweed and I'm going to add that directly into the bowl and just start mixing it in together. As you're mixing in the wakame, you might find that it gets stuck together. It is kind of slippery, so you just slip it apart and make sure that you mix it really well in amongst the cabbage. Yeah. 
So what I'm thinking is that this looks like I don't have enough of the seaweed that I like. So I'm gonna add about another tablespoon here. And just while I'm working, I'm just gonna let it soak. And you saw how fast this rehydrates, so there's no need to worry about um, working it in because once it's rehydrated, it's ready to eat. So you just gotta mix it in and you're good to go. And while the wakame is rehydrating, I'm gonna continue working the cabbage for our sauerkraut for another couple of minutes, maybe like two minutes. that you can squeeze and you can see the water coming out like you'll notice that there's just a lot more water at the bottom of the bowl that's when it's pretty much done so now I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the rest of my wakame it should be fully rehydrated by now and I'm gonna mix it in really well kind of stuff I like using wide mouth because it's easier to get your hand in there to push down I tried using the funnel for this video it didn't work it's just easier to use your hand and what you want to do is really pack it tight so you got to try to squeeze out all those air bubbles you see those bubbles that are coming up you want to get all those air pockets as much as you can out and you want to try to get all of the um, sauerkraut down underneath the liquid line fit everything into our jars we're gonna take the leaves that we saved at the beginning and we're gonna fold those over on themselves and we're gonna put it right into the top of the jar to make sure that we get all the little tiny pieces of cabbage that are floating up to the top down below that liquid line I get my super fancy rock that my kids always seem to have around the house and really clean I make sure it's really clean and I just put that right on top of that cabbage leaf to make sure that it's everything is submerged also when you put the lid on I'm just gonna put it on very loosely I don't want to put it on any tighter than finger tight Fast forward to a few days later, I think this is about two days later, and you can see all those little bubbles. That's the lacto fermentation happening. That's the carbon dioxide that's coming off, and that is good. That's normal. That's a sign of a healthy fermentation. I'm checking for mold, and what I'll do at this point is I will take off that extra leaf that's on the top and put the lid back on and just stick them in the fridge and use them as I go. They will continue to ferment. This one as well, I'll remove the rock and the leaf and you can see all those bubbles, that's a good sign. There's no mold. So this is a really good, successful fermentation. Also, just a quick note, if you do happen to see a little bit of sign of mold, you can just take off that top um, cabbage leaf and throw it out and check the rest of it. It's usually pretty good as long as it's not like a week later and totally infested, but um, that's why it's good to start checking it around day two or even just daily. If you're wondering what you should eat this with, try it with a fried egg, try it with your steak, mix it into your salad or whatever you like. It's really healthy for you. It has a bunch of probiotics. The seaweed is actually a prebiotic. The seaweed has unsoluble fiber, which is really good um, for feeding the, prebio the probiotics in your lower intestines. So yeah, if you guys like this video, found it helpful in any way, please don't forget to leave a comment, give a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you so much for watching.